the hook, but the phone never rang. Beast on the beat, no claws, no fang. Hello, I'm Christine, and July is over. It happened so fast, and it's August, and my allergies are here full force. Things are going great. I finished two books this month, but I'm close to finishing two more. I came so close to finishing four books. And I watched a load of movies and some TV, so let's get right into it. Off the hook, but the phone never rang. The first book I have to show you this month that I finished was Tempest and Slaughter by Tamara Pierce. This was a July book explosion book of the month. This month we were working with Random House. I did the audiobook for this one. It was really good. It's only one person narrating, but he does a really good job juggling all the different voices. If you don't know already, I am an Audible affiliate. I have a link, it's in the description below, and if you use it, you get your first audiobook for free, which is awesome. Tamara Pierce is a huge fantasy writer that I've never read before. So I was so excited to finally read something she's written. This is actually somewhat of a prequel series to her other huge series, The New Mare Chronicles. So the characters in Tempest and Slaughter are the beginnings of the characters that you'll see in the New Mare series, which I have not read. I didn't know that going into this. Tempest and Slaughter is a hugely character-driven story, and I think I really would have enjoyed it much more. Like, I still enjoyed it a lot, but I had this gnawing feeling in me the whole time waiting for something to drop and this huge epic crescendo of events to unfold. But really this built the world, this built character relationships. It's about these three young mage prodigies and they're attending the University of Karthak for mages, but they're very young for the actual school. So our lead lead character, Aram, is 11 and he's in school with 15 and 16 year olds and he rises through the ranks incredibly quickly. So we follow him from age 11 to I believe 15, 14, 15. And by that time he's in the upper academy where students are usually, you know, anywhere between 18 and 22. It's so fascinating to see their class schedule and really explore how the magic works. That's something I really love learning how they learn their magic. I think if you have read Tamara Pierce's other series, this must be full of Easter eggs. As Izu is fascinating and the world is beautiful and so solid in my mind. And I really now want to read the other series and see what these characters are like as adults. It's very, very well written. If you like character driven stories and if you've read Tamara Pierce's other books, I think you're going to absolutely love it. The first movie I watched this month was a rewatch and that was The Princess Diaries, which I saw was on Netflix. Watching it again made me realize how iconic this movie was for me in my childhood. Everything in it I could visualize so clearly and so many of the lines I know. Princess Diaries definitely gets an A. I think I found it funnier now than I did when I actually watched it when I was younger. I finished The Alienist this month. I talked about it in my previous stories at eight because I was so close to finishing and I loved it. I think this series was so well done. The cinematography was so beautiful. Every shot was just like, oh God, this is so cool. The outfits, just the costumes were so beautiful. Everything Dakota Fanning wears, I want. I want these 1896 turn of the century outfits. The next thing I watched this month was the Netflix rom-com that everyone told me I had to watch. Set it up with Zoe Deutsch and Lucy Liu. I had watched The Kissing Booth last month and just really enjoyed myself laughing at it and with it. In all different respects, I thought it was really cute. And Set It Up just didn't do it for me in that way. I mean, it was fine, but I only like chuckled once. And Kissing Booth, I like lulled a lot. There was too much hype, I guess, for it when I went into it. I would give it like a B. I just wanted it to be funnier and I wanted more stuff between the two romantic leads. The first movie in theaters I saw this month was Sorry to Bother You. I don't know if you've seen the trailer for this film, but it's excellent. I had no idea really what I was going into and you don't want to have any idea. This is a movie you want to just go into and experience. If you like Black Mirror, it has that sort of a feeling. It was such a ride and it was so clever. It's gonna get an A for me. Oh my god, I watched Riverdale season two this month. I don't know if you were here when I watched Riverdale season one. I binged it all on Netflix. I can't watch this show week to week. I've tried and I'm just like, this is so stupid. I can't watch it. But that was the beginning of the second season and that was was the first season. Now Riverdale season two, the first half of it was like, this is so stupid. It's like so on the nose, but I'm also enjoying myself. And then you get to like episode eight and all of a sudden I'm very invested. All of a sudden I like unironically like Riverdale and it's freaking me out. I didn't expect to be thinking about it so much and being like, oh yeah, that happens on Riverdale and this and that like season one just fell out of my mind. But season two, I just love what they did with all the characters. Cheryl Blossom, all of a sudden I really love Cheryl Blossom. And 
FP and oh my god, Betty's mom and Betty. Like, Betty annoyed me for a season, but all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, I really enjoy Betty. All of a sudden I think it's really good and I can't wait to watch more. When it was over, I was very sad. I had a book hangover, a TV hangover. I don't know. I'm gonna give an A to season two, even though the first seven episodes felt really dumb. There's a musical episode in season two and I loved it. That episode was excellent. Please do that again next season. Can we do another student play? Like, that was great. I finished season two of Handmaid's Tale. That just blew me away. Some of those episodes, especially the last couple, I've never been more anxious watching a show before. But wow, it's so powerful. And if you haven't started Handmaid's Tale, it's on Hulu. I highly recommend it. Season two was excellent. I think it was even better than season one. Cinematography, writing, acting consistently blows me away and brings me to tears. A plus. Oh my God, I read Looking for Alaska this month, finally. I have a whole book talk about it that's coming next week or the week after. So I'm gonna save my thoughts for the book talk, but I read it. I saw the Darkest Minds movie this month and I also did a complete separate review for that so I'm gonna send you over there if you want to see my feelings on the darkest minds I'll leave a link in the description I, we watched Shrek for the first time in like eight years I forgot how enjoyable Shrek is please stay off of the grass shine your shoes wipe your face how scandalous what a classic I am also currently halfway through Heart of Thorns which I am loving and I have four hours and 44 minutes left on a reaper at the gates by summit to hear I'm so close I really want to do book talk for both of these Mission Impossible Fallout came this month and I saw it I'm not like a huge Mission Impossible fan but I enjoyed the previous one and this one those are the only two I've seen this one I found to be really long and I don't know if that was a product of my seeing a later show and it was a two and a half hour film so by the end of it it was pretty late but the fact that Tom Cruise does all the stunts is wild and that's why it makes me interested in these movies watching it I'm just so much more tense because I know he's doing all the stuff There's a halo skydiving jump and I'm just watching this like why Tom? Why did you do this for real? Why? This is so dangerous! Why? They're not just stunts. They're crazy Mother forking sons. And I'm just imagining them shooting this and they have to practice shooting it. And it's just, they're, they're falling from the sky and he's doing stunts as they fall. There's like a jumble sequence. I just, what's happening? How? Okay, so the movie's gonna get an A, even though I was falling asleep a little bit in the middle. Tom Cruise starts running across rooftops and jumping. I was back after that. I was back. I was like, whoa, why does he look like he's on fast forward when he's running? This is the movie that Henry Cavill infamously needed the mustache for, so they had to CGI out his mustache during Superman reshoots. I didn't realize it was Henry Cavill for half the film. I was like, that guy is really weirdly handsome and looks familiar. And it finally hit me like, oh my God, that's Henry Cavill. You dumb. You dumb. This weekend, I also saw Christopher Robin, which I was really, really looking forward to because as a child, I watched a lot of Winnie the Pooh. I really loved everything with the Winnie the Pooh characters. I think they were spot on and adorable. Stuff with the humans, sometimes I was just waiting for them to get back to the animals. I mean, not sometimes, all the time I was waiting for them to get back to the animal stuff. I think the plot was a little clunky, but it was really sweet. And I really enjoyed, like I said, everything with the animals. If you were a Winnie the Pooh fan, I think you'll really enjoy it. Oh, Pooh Bear. I'm gonna give the movie a B plus. I wanted it to be like a Paddington. I felt like this was my Paddington, but I didn't get a Paddington movie. Like I didn't get an entire movie full of Paddington. I got like bits and pieces of Pooh Bear. We focused on Christopher Robin, but I wanted it to be about Pooh and Christopher Robin the whole time. <laughs> and the last movie I saw this month was The Spy Who Dumped Me with Mila Kunis and Kate McKinnon. And I did really enjoy this movie. I was hoping that it was going to be better than it was. It fluctuated so much on Rotten Tomatoes, so I didn't know what to think. Usually when it comes to a comedy, on Rotten Tomatoes, if it falls anywhere over 40%, I want to see it. It's done by a female director. The two lead characters are kick-ass ladies. And it was really, really fun. There were two or three jokes that I found extra hilarious. I was crying laughing at one part, and then I laughed at, like, a couple other parts. I wasn't in hysterics, like, consistently throughout it, which was a bummer. But I was in it consistently throughout it, which was fun. I really enjoyed the way it ended. I love Mila Kunis, and Kate McKinnon is always great. So I had an excellent time. I'm going to give it a B+. Plus. I think 
think a lot of my laughs were stolen from the trailer. I laughed a lot of that trailer. I hate watching trailers. And this, ladies and gents, are all the stories I ate this month. I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of the things I talked about, or if there's a movie, TV show, book that you read this month that was your favorite, please share. I'm Christine. I make videos every Tuesday and other days too. I'm at XTeenMay on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!